Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, we're featuring the incredible Jordan Taylor. She's a luxury real estate consultant and philanthropist bridging the worlds of properties and purpose from Los Angeles to New York City. With a sharp eye for design, Jordan also curates living spaces that blend functionality with style, creating dream homes for her clients. Now, beyond her real estate prowess, Jordan is the heart and soul behind 12 Months of Giving. It's a nonprofit she founded. This initiative spotlights global foundations and movements driving positive change. Her unique ability to seamlessly merge her love for design and her dedication to philanthropy sets her apart, making her a transformative force both in the world of luxury real estate and social impact. Today, she's here to chat social activism, real estate, and talk to us about her partnership with Once Upon a Coconut and how they're revolutionizing the beverage industry. Welcoming now to the show is the amazing Jordan Taylor. Welcome, superstar. Hi, Zen. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. Now let's jump right to it. Could you tell us more about your journey in becoming a luxury real estate consultant and a philanthropist and what really inspired you to, bri to bridge these two worlds of properties and purpose? Yeah, of course. So um, I started real estate about seven, eight years ago uh, here in New York City, and I was just kind of good at it. I was finding amazing properties for my friends and my family and uh, decided to kind of monetize on that. And um I jumped into the luxury world straight away. And from there, there's kind of a natural lead into, I mean, there's a lot of money that flows around with real estate and a lot of money that kind of just sees no purpose. So for me, I was like, where can I channel one, my own commissions? And then also just a lot of the money that my higher end clients just have laying around. So uh, during the pandemic, I started a nonprofit called 12 Months of Giving, where every month we highlight a new uh, challenge the world is kind of going through and that so and someone or some organization that's already doing the work to change that or to empower someone or to to fix a problem in the world. And so um, it was very easy to kind of funnel my clientele and my black book into this world of giving. And I'm, I couldn't be happier with how that all worked out. It's amazing how there are no coincidences. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And I think real estate requires a lot of intuition because you now you have to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and channel what they love and what they want and what that space means to them. So you are, you are an intuitive and that's why you're good at this. Now, 12 months of giving is what we're talking about. It's your nonprofit initiative and you really spotlight global foundations and movements like you just said, but can you share some of the most impactful moments or projects that have emerged from the initiative? Sure. Um, you know, I took a year off as I've, so I moved to LA for a bit and now I'm moving back and settling back in New York. So it's been about a year since we've really focused in on it. But uh, in the previous year, one of my favorite months is always when we team up with, um, it's more so individuals who have been wrongfully accused of crime and we kind of hear their stories. And, you know, a friend of mine was locked up for now 19 years before uh, they finally, yeah, it's insane. Uh, they finally um, cleared her of the charges, but that's a really important one that we've decided to do every single year. So every year we also make sure that we team up with Be The Match. So they work a lot with blood cancers. Um, we do drives with them. We do online kind of uh, collaboration with them to make sure that their mission gets out and we get as many people uh, filtered into their to their system as possible. So they're also a wonderful uh, worldwide group that does amazing work. It's so important to give back and it's so important to, to identify how we will continue to give back, not only to each other, but to the world. And these are two incredible, incredible causes that you just brought up. So kudos to you for doing that. Thanks. Now let's talk about your partnership with Once Upon a Coconut. Can you explain the unique aspect of this collaboration and how you feel they're revolutionizing the beverage industry? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have known um, the Once Upon a Coconut guys for many years, I want to say maybe six or seven years now. And they have always struck me as people that genuinely just have great hearts. And they've come up with this product that not only, you know, is one of my favorite things to keep stocked in my kitchen, but they, it's important to me that they do have a purpose and they do have a message behind such a, such a unique brand. 
Um, so it was kind of a no brainer for me to team up with them and hydrate myself and hydrate the hearts of others. Um, and I can't wait to see what they, what they end up doing with the brand. I think this is just the beginning. This is the tip of the iceberg. Oh, yeah. They are going big places. And I know for a fact that they, they, they scoured the earth for a very specific type of coconut water and it landed them in Vietnam. Now the world's sixth largest producer, producer of coconuts is Vietnam and coconut over there is a form of religion. And this dates back to 1960s where people worship and consume nothing but coconuts. Specifically, this region has insanely delicious tasting coconuts. Uh, but this particular brand has zero additives. It's so low in calories absolutely no artificial flavors, which is a big stickler for me. And it, and it, and listen, it doesn't feel like a mind blowing taste palette because of everything I just said, right? Zero additives, no sugar added, but it totally is. And I could personally vouch for this brand. I specifically love the chocolate. I don't know what you, I, the pineapple and the chocolate are my favorites. What flavors do you love? I love the OG. I think the flavors just speak perfectly to you. And, and you're right. Like it doesn't sound like it would be, and I'm sure people have tried other coconut waters. It is a world above the rest without a doubt. Yeah. And so tell me, what do you believe sets them apart from other brands uh, other, other than the taste? Um, how does it align with your values and goals in the world of social impact? Because they are extremely active. They are, they are. And I think that they're very vocal about that. Um, I think for me, it's, they're very, um, they have a clear, they have very clear branding. So they make it very clear to their consumers, you know, how sustainable they've been, how, um, you know, they've, they've really sourced their product in a responsible way. And I haven't seen that from other brands. And I think that since the beginning, um, the guys at Once Upon a Coconut have made sure that people are at the front of their conversations. And so, you know, their sourcing has been pretty, pretty impressive. Without a doubt, like sustainability and environmental consciousness, you just said it, are increasingly important in the beverage industry. Absolutely. And Once Upon a Coconut incorporates these values into its products and practices, which is game changer for me. But, you know, it's one thing to introduce premium coconut water that tastes better than anything else, better better than anything I've ever tried before, but it's truly something else to give back, like you said, to the communities and people that truly need it. And that's why for every case of Once Upon a Coconut sold, they donate 10% to a charity that they select each month, which is so important and aligns with exactly the yes. ethos of everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how do you balance your career in luxury real estate with your dedication to philanthropy? And are there any principles or strategies you follow to seamlessly merge these two areas of your life? Um, yeah, I mean, it's actually quite easy to kind of do both. Um, with real estate, I got into real estate because it allows me to have more of a fluid uh, a schedule. But I mean, instead of working a nine to five, I'm kind of working 24-7 but I've, I've integrated the two. So for me, you know, it, it, it's only natural for me to have these conversations with people now and bring up the nonprofit right at the beginning. You know, it's, it's interesting. It's, they get to know me a, a bit deeper, which I think is very important. I consider real estate, you kind of, you kind of are matchmaking, you know, you're matchmaking a person with a home or, or a person with an apartment or a family with an apartment. So for me, I think it's important for them to get to know their matchmakers. So the nonprofit is a huge part of my life and my personality. And I do find that, you know, 99% of the time we stay on that and, you know, the real estate comes second and we find really cool ways to collaborate together or for them to get involved. And because we have 12 different uh, nonprofits every year, there's always something, if not several things that get them, uh, that get them interested and kind of, kind of float their boat a little bit. And then we can kind of dive a little deeper into one specific cause. Boy, you have such a great roadmap. I, this is fantastic that you've incorporated <laughs> giving back, balancing it all, making money, doing what you love, and really just being in charge of your own self. I love everything you're doing. Yeah. Now, you have a sharp eye, a really sharp eye for design uh, in your real estate work. How does your approach to design and aesthetics translate into creating dream homes for your clients? So it's kind of a new addition to my real estate consulting that I've added in. I've, I've been familiar with design forever. My mother's incredibly good at it. Uh, I just never really had the confidence to kind of do it for people that were paying me. So in the last <laughs> yeah, I would do it for all my friends, myself. Like I always had the funnest apartments, but it was the first time, you know, just a couple of years ago, it was the first time I, I was finally given the platform by a client now really great friend of mine. They handed me a credit card and they said, 
I don't want to know what you're doing. Get in there. I just want to see your vision. And it, it unlocked something for me. So it's kind of my MO now. I, I prefer like leave. I mean, let's, let's collaborate on this, on your ideas and, and, and help me out here. But I want you to leave for a week and come back to, you know, the home of your dreams. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think, as you said earlier, I'm, a, I'm an intuitive person. I, it's what makes me so good at real estate as well. I can hear what you're saying you want, but a lot of times people don't know how to articulate what it is exactly they want. So I'm good at kind of reading between the lines and then also getting to know you enough to know what is going to be the most functional and aesthetically pleasing for you, um, despite or in spite of what you say. Boy, you have your work cut out for you because there's a lot. There's a lot of psychology that goes into all of this. Oh yeah. But I. But the the story of when you got handed that credit card and they said run with it. That's that was the beginning because oh, yeah. that's somebody else putting so much faith into not just you and your work, but into the process and allows you to put that seal of approval that says, "Hey, I am worth it. Hey, this is a business." And it really does take that first client and then the rest is a domino effect. So I'm glad you found that person. Yeah. Now, what did, what advice do you have for individuals looking to make a really meaningful impact? Okay. Both in the, in the real estate industry, but, and the realm of social activism, they want to kind of mimic your behavior. Where should they start? Um, so for me, I kind of had to jump off because this all happened for me during the pandemic. I think we were all in this state of helplessness with everything going on. Um, I was kind of scrolling through social media and and was hit by a, a video that just tugged on every heartstring I had. And um, from there, I kind of took a deep dive into that specific cause, which was be the match. It was a it was a the video was a kid who was suffering from a pain moment during um, his sickle cell. So it got me right in the heart. So I think what's important is for people to kind of find what it is that really speaks to them and what what would really ground them to to a purpose and from there build their life kind of around that. So I was given that opportunity to, you know, I had nothing but time and and people around me. I was back in my hometown. So my girlfriends from high school all wanted to get involved. And so I got to surround myself not with not with people who wanted a job or not with people, people who wanted to just give back and wanted to spend their time doing that. So I would say find your purpose in terms of like, find what really speaks to you, build your knowledge around that, and then build your circle around that. Um, and then from there, be open, be a bit fluid as to where it want to takes you. There was a moment where we tried to make this a little bit more corporate and it just, it stifled us. And so I would say, let your passion move the way it needs to move, um, and help who needs to be helped along the way. And don't let kind of the the technical next steps get in the way for you. So what you're saying is let, let the universe guide you. Absolutely. And you did just that. Well, we are at the end of time. Thank you so much. You are so, so inspiring and you're doing such a great job at social activism, giving back and, and at streamlining your business in such a beautiful way. And I love it that you are a female trailblazer in your field. Thank you, Zen. I appreciate it. This has been wonderful. That was our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. That was the incredible Jordan Taylor. She's a luxury real estate consultant and philanthropist bridging the worlds of properties and purpose from LA to New York City. You can definitely check her out at 12monthsofgiving.org. That's 12mog.org. You could head directly on the gram and find her at Jordan Taylor now or at 12 months of giving. That was our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. Now imagine a drink that's nutrient-rich, powerfully refreshing, naturally sweet with no added sugars, not from concentrate, zero additives, low in calories, absolutely no artificial flavors, and is so tasty that it will become your new favorite beverage. Well, enter Once Upon a Coconut. It's the absolute best tasting coconut water you will ever try. It's available in four refreshing flavors. You could go with pure chocolate, pineapple, and sparkling with energy. But do your taste buds a favor and pick some up today. Head to onceuponacoconut.com. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, 100% pure coconut water. Imagine a drink that's nutrient 
iron rich, powerfully refreshing, naturally sweet with no added sugars, not from concentrate, zero additives, low in calories, absolutely no artificial flavors, and is so tasty that it will become your new favorite beverage. Enter Once Upon a Coconut, the absolute best tasting coconut water you will ever try. Available in four refreshing flavors, pure, chocolate, pineapple, and sparkling with energy. Do your taste buds a favor and pick up some today at onceuponacoconut.com.